PC was a huge success and we received an incredible response from all of you regarding the new features we released in September. If you haven't had the chance to watch the FFDC keynote yet, you can watch the full live stream or explore individual talks by Abel, Alex and Leah on YouTube. Plus all the individual talks by the rest of the team are now available in the FFDC playlist. During FFDC, we introduced several exciting new features like libraries that lets you create reusable Flutterflow resources that can be added to any Flutterflow project. Plus widget builder as parameters, keyboard shortcuts and 50 new action triggers. Also, development environments that allows you to add different Firebase projects to different environments, commits and branching, and the VS Code extension. For more details on these features, be sure to check out their tutorial videos here on YouTube. Now let's dive into the new updates released in October. We have upgraded Flutter to version 3.24.2 and updated some of the third-party packages that we rely on. Note that Android projects will now require a minimum SDK version of 23 and iOS deployment target will default to 13. To help you adapt, we have published a migration guide detailing the breaking changes and how to resolve them. Check the link in the description below. We also recommend watching our how to resolve dependency errors video to address any potential conflicts with these updates. Previously, development environments primarily focused on APIs and Firebase projects. Now we are excited to announce support for separate Superbase projects for each of your environment. This means you can easily separate your development Superbase project from your production project, eliminating any need for workarounds or manual switching before deployment. To get started, Create environment values such as Superbase API URL and Superbase Anon key for each environment. Then configure the Superbase properties to reference these new values. We're also excited to announce the new Flex widget, which can assist you in creating responsive layouts. Often you may need to build conditional logic for different layouts based on criteria like screen size or changing page state values. The Flex widget allows you to set the layout direction to be either horizontal or vertical, making it adaptable to your needs. For instance, you can create a layout where on larger screens, the content is displayed on a horizontal row, while on smaller screens, the same content automatically switches to vertical column layout. This flexibility enables you to design more responsive and dynamic user interfaces without additional conditional builders. We introduced libraries during FFDC and they have proven to be very useful for teams working with multiple reusable modules. We are now excited to announce upcoming improvements for libraries. First up, library values. This new feature allows library developers to create values that users can pass into a library project. For example, Let's go back to our infamous Slack Connect project. Now we can add the webhook ID as a library value. So this can now be set by the consumer projects during the initialization process. And then you can directly use the library value wherever required. For example, in the webhook API, the webhook variables value is now set from the library value. Additionally, we have deprecated team libraries that allowed you to create team API and code libraries within team accounts. Going forward, the new libraries feature will be the recommended approach for building reusable resources. This means no new team libraries can be created and teams should adopt the new library structure for all reusable modules. In addition to the major updates, we released several smaller but impactful features last month. You can now add a custom component to your tooltips instead of just plain text, allowing you to create fully customized and contextual tooltips. If you're using component with predefined background color, ensure that your tooltip widget also has the same background color set. We've also added a new toggle opacity property letting you animate the opacity changes. When linking opacity to a dynamic value, you can customize the animation's curve and duration for smoother transition and a polished visual experience. When adding an icon to the button widget, you now have the option to select if it should be displayed as leading or trailing the label text, providing more flexibility in your button design. All right, so that's all the major updates from October 
Stay tuned for next month's recap where we will cover more such exciting releases. Happy building!